Okay, um, now I did something sneaky um, since the last video. Um, what I did was, is I took her, you know, the parts we did in here, and I took it to another program and to where I could actually do the welds properly. So you can kind of see the difference here. You know, that's what, you know, uh, a proper skirt will look like. Um, let me, you know, because I got new adapter and new um, switch PCB you know um, to take care of the switch PCB and adapter here they take the place of it but you know you can see how I formed this lip here you know so you know that's got a an indent on it I'm going to put the skirt and you can see how it's done you know it just kind of has a uh, you know, little lip in it that actually goes over that so it makes it so there's a little less error when you're in it looks a hell of a lot better uh, too than you know but it's a little less error when you're gluing the parts together um, because there's a capture you know between these two parts so um, but like I said bringing the old parts in for comparison remember that's how it looked you know with these you know that's just unsightly I just don't like that that's why I never do it that way but um, Anyway, you know, these will be the pieces that we go with because that looks a heck of a lot better. <laughs> um, and I pretty much determined, by the way, that, um, you know, I'm probably going to want to add about a sixteenth of an inch or, or, or more to the, the radius of the next part we form because, you know, again, it's awfully tight on this battery, you know, coming awfully close to these walls, you know, that you see there. <laughs> So, you know, I'd like to add a little bit more play, you know, as a tolerance for error in it. So, I'm going to, you know, make it at least a sixteenth, if not larger, than that probably a hundred mil. In fact, you know, so I'm going to have this, um, basically the next part we're going to do is going to have to come down and flare out and then go down. And because of that, I'm probably going to actually print this as an adapter too and make it so that it has a capture that, um, well, I guess I, I can't really capture that. So, I don't know, I might just make it stick out, um, but see I'd like some kind of a capture mechanism because if these are going to be at a different size, getting an alignment on it could be rather tricky. Um, and since this is going to be the top of the print remember this next part is going to print from the top down so because of that um, you know that could cause the print to be a little funky but I don't know I might go ahead and just try to do that as a single piece and just put a little 45 degree flare over it and then have it go that way um, otherwise what I could do is just, you know, because I mean I need something to, to give me a visual alignment cue if there's no kind of capture mechanism like I have between these two parts, you know, I got that little capture lip, you know, but unless I did something like that, you know, if I did something like that it'd have to go on the outside of it, but again, since the top of this, this being the first layer of this next part we're going to do, has to be flat you know I'd have to just start immediately flaring out from here and then go down but I guess I could probably do that that's probably not too big of a problem I've printed parts like that before so I probably won't do an adapter then I'll probably just uh, you know start from the bottom of this part and work our way down but so having said that um, now this next part, the next two parts we're going to have are going to have threads in it. And I know I'm going to, uh, i got to figure like an eighth of an inch for the thread channel. So out of the wall thickness there and um, so that's pretty, th that's, you know, pretty thick. But again, I've never actually printed threads in, in a, on a 3D printer before. So I don't know what results I'm going to have. The only thing I do know is I'm going to have to use triangular threads. Um, but beyond that, I've never tried printing a threaded object before, so it's going to be a first. So, I'm going to 
to, you know, try to, you know, size things fairly large on it and so forth, because again, you know, there's limits to resolution and all that on a 3D printed object, and it's still not going to smoothly slide because of the layered nature of it. So, um, so because of that, um, you know, I want to make things generously large and, and so forth. But it's going to be kind of an experiment, you know, printing a threaded part. I've never tried that, so, as I've said before. But again, I still want to allow about an eighth of an inch for the threaded part, which is pretty much our wall thickness right now. So, um, but i got to add more to it than just that, you know, for the actual housing itself. Because we don't want too thin of a wall, you know, that contains the threads, because otherwise, you know, that may break or split. So, basically it's going to flare out and go down, but i got to add thickness, and that's another reason to add you know, some generous clearances in here as well, but it's going to have to get thicker, um, you know, for these threads in all likelihood. Um, <coughs> so, because like I said, I want to add, uh, you know, at least an eighth of an inch into the, the diameter of this inner part of this tube just to begin with, you know, just for battery clearances. Um, let me go ahead and start hiding some of this stuff because we don't need a lot of this stuff in our way. We do need that. basically working with. Now, let's see. Okay, a lot of these curves I'm going to go ahead and dispose of. Um, Okay, um, let's try to think what I'm going to do on this. But so you can see, you know, how tight these walls generally will be, even an eighth of an inch, you know, because we've got you know, just a clearance of like this to our battery. Again, hopefully it's a little better than this, but that's an eighth of an inch right there. So if our wall thickness was an eighth of an inch, we didn't flare it out, you know, we'd be in real trouble. So I know we're going to want to flare this thing out. You know, preferably... outer wall, or for the uh, for the inner wall, actually. Well, the inner wall can be where that outer wall is um, currently, and that's fine, because that gives us an eighth of an inch, as you can see there. Um, that would be fine for an inner wall, but the outer wall needs to be an eighth of an inch plus 
any kind of wall thickness, which is really about three sixteenths or more. So, um, you know, so really it almost needs to be 200 mil, unfortunately. Um, you know, which is making an awful wide candle base. It's over two inches in diameter for the base. So, um, no, I know we need an inner part too that's <coughs> at least like that. That actually is what we're going to glue, you know, this, that. So I'm going to need to pull that out of something. Just as a reference. Still wonder if we're going to have to do this as a separate piece, just because of the, you know, the threads themselves are going to end up being kind of complex, and just like that, you know, like this piece, you know, up here crapped out on us on the boolean operation. I mean, if you have this plus that thread, that thread's going to be a miracle. We'll see if we can get that to work right. So um, with the boolean operation, so you know, it'll be a real kind of a long shot whether it'll work or not. But we'll see. Let's see. Okay, but like I said, this inner wall is going to be like there to there. So that's going to be a thicker cylinder. Um, what I'll probably do is start by just pulling this down some arbitrary length, you know, wherever I want our thread parting line to be. You know, probably about like right here. Um, and then I'll take this, do a boolean subtract on it to get it started. Okay, and you can see we got pretty good clearance now on everything. <coughs> now the thread itself, like I said, will probably. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Boy, that's going to have to be in the middle. The thread channel will almost certainly have to be in the middle. See, the bottom part we do, I'm going to have mate. You know, it's going to be a male part, and this is going to be a female part. So I got to carve out a channel, and, and like that could be, you know, like for example here. So I could carve this channel out of the bottom section here to put our threads sticking inward. But then this bottom section that we have mate to this has got to have the same kind of wall on this side. So that would only leave us this amount of room for a channel plus tolerance, which isn't much. You know, that's only about 81 mil. Um, and you subtract at least 25 or 30 mil, you know, just to have some tolerance on the 3D printed parts. 
I don't believe you a 50 mil thread. I'm not sure 50 mil is going to be strong enough or good enough to hold this in. So I'm a little skeptical about that. Now I could have the wall jaunt in a little bit, eating up some of our battery room, but I'd rather not do that. You know, in the in the lower half of this, I'd rather not have that. Do that. Hmm. Because, like I said, you know, we're already dealing with a very thick wall. I mean, it really wouldn't be practical to, you know, go into production on a part this thick at all. Um. Might not need to though, because I, I think the production plastics would be stronger than this. But on the other hand, if I ever put one into production on this, I'd probably prefer to try to make it part parts of it out of aluminum at least. Let's see. Yeah, because like I said, I wanted the threads to stick out at least a hundred mil uh, themselves. Again, given how coarse, you know, again, 3D printing is going to be and everything on it. I um, want to make things generous as possible. Well, I think I'm going to have to make that outer cylinder larger diameter then. The only thing I can think of. thick. This uh, thing's already, you know, at least a good two and a quarter inch diameter. As you can tell, you know, each 
four of these little squares, you know, is one inch. So anyway, you know, so this to here to here is an inch, here to here is two inches. So this is under two and a uh, one and a quarter from this direction and one and a quarter from that direction. So it's about two and a quarter inch. <laughs> Getting pretty pretty thick. <clears throat> I'll make it print take print, take longer to print also. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna have to have these. I think we're gonna have to have a you know, this piece in between these two um, I think is going to have to be a, a separate piece just because of the wall, the variable wall thicknesses alone and everything you know, are going to make it a little complicated. Although I might be able to get away with it though. Um, and I guess we'll see because on the bottom of this piece if you recall correctly, or if you recall, um, you know, we got a lot to glue to up here, so it could still work. I'm just still not wanting to push my luck too much because again it takes a long time to do these 3D prints so so I like to err on the side of it working instead of not working <laughs> and having to reprint it so that's why I don't like to take a lot of chances on stuff like this especially when I'm new newly experimenting with it and like I said these threads I've not tried doing threads before so I don't want them in for here distance here when I did that. Um, let's see if we've got a distance of the uh okay now we got a distance of 260 mil so I gotta basically lower this by 60 mil okay now I should be able to pull that off there and do 
the same thing. Be, but really need to extrude this direction as well. Hmm. <coughs> the thing is that since both of these objects are on the surface of each other it may not we'll give it a try but it may not do a boolean subtract properly yeah, sometimes I guess it did sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't now just for S and G's let's do a real quick boolean weld to see if it fails or not okay it looks like it succeeded but let me go ahead and undo it because I don't want to do that just yet Although, actually, let me go ahead and redo it. Copy it. Undo it. Paste it. And put it on an unused layer. <coughs> so that way I've got a copy of the welded version in case I have problems. It gives me another alternative to mess with later. Okay, um, alright, at the moment we need to look at the question of is this enough room for lead wires from the battery container? Personally, you know, even though we've got, you know, a good quarter of an inch plus, you know, we do have wires sticking up, up the top of the battery holder, so and we do have a channel for them to go through up in here, but it's a little constricted. So I'm kind of thinking about moving the battery just arbitrarily down, you know, nearly an eighth of an inch more or so. Just give us a little extra play. Um, next, we need to come and grab this sucker here and put it here. So we can extrude the next part of this. And I'm going to go a little below where our battery holder is right now. Uh, to do that, and um, apparently I grabbed the wrong thing. <sighs> yeah, I'll put that there. Now on the bottom, as I may have said earlier, you know, we're going to have a flared out base. Um, and that's just for stability because this thing's going to be so long. So, you know, this is at, you know, a diameter of 2.2 inches right now. And I think we should have at least, like, say, three and a half. this thing and we'll see if that looks right here in a second um, again I'll just kind of arbitrarily put it down here um, let me again for reference light up some of these other layers so we can all see if that looks looks proper when I do this thing okay let's uh, take this and we're gonna flare it you know not at 45 degrees but probably because this this bottom piece is gonna print from the bottom up so um, oops. You know, 
That gives a little bit more tip stability. It's I don't know, you know, it's still a little bit. I'm almost thinking not wide enough, but I don't want to make it absurd either. Things one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost nine inches fully deployed. I've only given it a you know, lip here of you know, about half an inch really on either side so yeah I think I'll Let me change that angle to uh, about 75 degrees. Minus 75 degrees. Okay. Now, let's um, up, nudge this up a little bit. And then let me take the base here and screw that down on it. Okay. So that gives us basically that, which that looks a lot more stable. <coughs> that gives us still, you know, better part of an inch, you know, the lip around this thing, so it's a lot less inclined to tip over this way. Um, especially if you're going to have a power cord plugged into it for the emergency light thing, you know, you don't want anything trying to tip this over, including the weight of the power cord. So, um, weld these together if we can. Okay, that looks good. Now, having done that, um, I need to um, pull out this <sighs> see where was it well, well let me turn some of this stuff off That's the uh, inner curve still. So I'll pull that down into about here. There's no need for it to really go into the base, and that'll make our bullion operation more likely to succeed.
I still yet to join these two pieces, but again, that's what we're going to work on a thread. Okay. Check to see what we're looking at up here. Okay, so that's the result of our cone right there. So that's containing our battery. Um, for now, I can just leave that part hidden because we've got the interface established. So, um, all right. So let me hide this upper. part of the housing. Let's see where we're at here. I'm going to go ahead and just get this out of the way. I'm going to hide it. Um, well, I guess I better open up that other layer. Uh, our circles have disappeared. Um, okay. Well, let me Pull up that housing too. I'm confused. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's see. This bottom part. This would be the relevant curve. For the inner part of our channel. So. I'll put that right there and then I'll grab that sucker there and now as far as how long I'm going to make the threads okay I'll take it to there And we'll determine that. Now, I'm probably going to want to make it like an inch. You know, so to have a pretty generous set of threads on it. Um, I can subtract this from this. And bingo, that's where our threads are going to be on this piece. Well, Actually, I guess I messed up, didn't I? Um, okay, let me undo that. Okay. So it's 2.73, I'll make it 3.733. <clears throat> okay, so that makes it cut up into that, which is what we want. Then we want to take this, actually, and move it up one inch. And do our Boolean subtraction. Okay, so now we have a nice hidden thread piece there. In order to access those threads, you know, that's where our threads are going to be, right there. So, like I said, it's a pretty thin wall, I mean, a sixteenth of an inch, but. Alright. So now I've got to actually figure the thread thing out. And, um,. We're going to use the spiral command for that. And I'll just kind of arbitrarily put it about right here because we're going to have to actually do two sets of these, one slightly larger than the other. Uh, this thread is going to be melded, you know, added to. What the hell? Is this thread that I'm going to draw is going to be actually added to this piece as an addition. Now, 
the, the bigger thread we're going to make is just going to make into goes to the, you know is carved out of the upper housing. So thing I do want to do actually is I don't want well actually let me go ahead and do that okay, I'm going to keep this set and I'm going to actually do this um, I'm going to make this less than an inch and arbitrarily it'll be placed right there now this will be our set of threads for this but the thing is, is the threads are going to stop there. I'm not going to make the threads go completely to the collar. Um, because I like the thread to come to an end. You know, given the fact that, you know, again, 3D printing is going to form the stair step pattern. It's not going to be a nice smooth curve. It'll be a stair step. You know, a terraced pattern. Um, now, of course, I don't think this is, this is probably too many threads, too. Um, make it 0.7 inch tall and but I've got five turns I'm gonna make it like three turns and again arbitrarily we'll put it there so basically this is going to start toward the top but it's not going to come you know it's not going to actually come down to this this uh, you know ledge here so so I'll start slightly above the ledge and end slightly prior to it the top of it and remember we're going to have our threads here so they're going to be triangular too so they're going to take up some of that room but I don't want to have the threads of this actually go down uh, and touch that in fact I'm going to make this I'm going to do this again Make it point six five. <clears throat> Again, our threads are going to be made a little triangle, so that seems worse. What the? Oh. Okay. Anyway, with our triangles, you know, we're going to have to have a little triangle um, for a thread, so. In fact, we can dry, draw that right now. Um, you know, the distance between turns. Okay, it's about 200 mil. So I'm going to keep our threads, you know, again, like I said before, about, you know, 100 mil on one side, maybe a little, um, you yeah, know, about 100 mil or so.
Okay, so that's that triangle. Now, this next triangle we want to be about about 30 mil larger than that. Now, maybe that's a little excessive. Um, this is the triangle we're going to actually cut out. And that gives us, let's see what kind of room we're talking about here. Maybe 60 mil. You know, probably don't need that kind of clearance. Let's see. And if you have about 30 mil in between threads, yeah, that's probably excessive. Um, in fact, I know it's excessive. Um, yeah, it's a little too long. about 30 mil that direction and approximately 15 mil for a total of 30 mil in that direction. It's probably close enough, but I'd like to make this a tad bigger than that. So, okay, so that's the thread we're going to cut. That's the thread we're going to position. <sighs> okay, so let me draw another spiral. And this one, you know, I want to be like, say, 1.2 inch. Same exact diameter. Uh oh, god darn it. this a different way. Um, So this set of curves is going to be for our other part, and I can go ahead and move it to its layer. I just wanted, wanted to make sure these were in exact alignment, they're going to be the exact same, you know, number of turns, etc. So, 
Anyway, I'll put this on the other layer as well. Well, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, instead of um, going to there, I'm actually going to take this a little, a little below the surface here. Okay. below the surface. What the hell is going on here? Oh, damn it. Can't be. I mean, that can't be right. What the hell's the inner part of it? And what is this? What's this supposed to be for? the wrong thing is I'm creating these curves apparently so that's way to for the end I need it in this wall here um, surface okay keep it something like that copy it
Oh yeah, I just thought of something. Um, let me undo this. Okay, so this sucker really needs to go down here too, so that this is slightly above it. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now I need to copy this and let me go and you know, kind of carve this out like here and get rid of that and carve this out like here and get rid of that. So, and then paste that in and take this sucker and put it there, okay? So, perfect alignment of everything. And that gives us, you know, a few turns, two or three turns here. So, that's pretty good. And... the triangle there. So what I'm going to do now is use the orient on curve function. I'm going to grab the midpoint of this. There's the path curve and we want it perpendicular. So that just put our little triangle right there. I what is this? What the hell happened here? Damn old. And that's why you should always use your elevator command to move things. Okay, now i got to figure out why this orient on the curve thing was working a little squirrely. Let me go ahead and... God! Man, this program really seriously needs a way to lock your friggin' toolbars. So, now, um, 
and like I said, let's try to figure out what's wrong with this thing. Um, not perpendicular. The problem is, I'm not really sure. Let's try sticking it up here instead. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. I mean, this orientation is wrong. I have no way of looking at it. Okay, this has got the right orientation. It's just backwards. Now let me try if I I don't know if I can flip it though. I mean it looks like it's on a plane, so that's a good spot to look there. Um Say how that's going to come out. That could really screw up the geometry a little bit. Uh, because I didn't exactly, you know, give you a lot of choices on what you can do with this thing and how it actually orientates anything. I don't use this command very much. If <laughs> you haven't figured that out, um, again, the same the best program for doing things like this. put the other triangle in there, I may not be so lucky.
But yeah, I, mean, I could adjust my C-plane to it or whatever, but I sure really like doing that because, again, I've got, you know, there's there's just, there are bugs in this program and, you know, and sometimes things can be kind of squirrely screwing around with that kind of stuff. It probably works fine, it's just, you know, it's just a little squirrely and I don't like messing with the C-plane all that much. It's just, um... I find it cumbersome. Again, you know, programs like Solid Edge and everything, you don't have to worry as much about things like that, so... But again, I still like using this program more than uh, others like Solid Edge and so forth because it's, you know, it's still freestyle and I like to be able to, you know, do these easy situational positioning, you know, instead of having to actually make mating relationships and all that stuff for all your parts, you know, just so you can see how things relate to each other. It's just more cumbersome. So, you know, there are pluses and minuses. But plus I wanted to, you know, use a program for this tutor that was more accessible to a lot of people. So, you know, I'd have to dish out, you know, 5000 bucks or 8000 bucks for um okay let's see what we got here yeah because like I said on this curve you know we may not get so lucky on it you see it's a different location so when I put this triangle here on it I'll put this triangle here on it. Again, we may not get so lucky. Of course, it's backwards too. See, with that being the case, you know, in my opinion, I don't think there's any freaking way in hell that that other curve could actually be right. These are completely flipping off axis, you know, with each other. They're not right at all. Like I said, hell, they're, they're not even sharing a common, you know, they're not even you know, join properly. This program sure as hell has a lot of drawbacks, I'll tell you that damn much. Um, let me try this instead. Jeez, I mean, I just don't even know. There's a midpoint here. And I don't like it. I still say this may have flipped though in that process. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. See, it's not got the right. It, it's not following the slope of the curve anymore. You see, you know, this program just really sucks at things like this. I'll tell you that much. It just really does. I mean, I just don't know why anybody would ever make threads in a program like this or. It just really bites. So you can see that this right here is generally orientated to the curve. Okay. And if I take this and do just like I did before. orthogonal to it pretty much but now it's disorientated so I don't know I don't know why I can really 
to do, honestly. where'd it go? I mean, it's gone now. Anyways, you know, because of that, you know, remember how we, you know, manipulated this other triangle. That's why I'm still skeptical about that actually being right. I was surprised that went so well because that was sort of arbitrary, um, everything I did there. this layer and let's do a rail extrude single rail select rail curve select cross section and voila and then go back and put it back in the shaded render display What the hell's going on here? solid supposed to be a dialogue box or something that pops up asking you questions, but it's not. I don't see it. 